the reason why people most of the time are not successful is because they won't go after it. Mm-hmm. They give up. It's hard. It's too hard. It's difficult. It's uncomfortable. You know, it, and it's a lot of work up front. I, okay, so when I started my business, whenever I got out of college, I actually I was working at an ad agency, entering in just it was RV dealership, car dealerships, and I was doing like demographics and picking points for media, like afternoon media in different markets. Like it was all numbers on like this old computer. It was like sounds exciting. Green yeah. <laughs> so creative. Um, and I remember just walking around the office and it was like gray cubicles and I would look over at everyone and everyone's face was so miserable. I just remember like the most exciting thing of the day was getting to go to like Taco Bueno for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> it was really sad. Yeah. Or going outside to have like a smoke break. Right. You know? Yeah. I was like, this cannot be my life. So that actually, whenever I graduated, I wanted to do something creative. I was bartending in, you know, paying my way working at an ad agency I was bartending I was doing kind of other jobs selling my work I would do pop-ups I would do and then I actually interviewed for I found a listing on Craigslist for an art consultant and I had no idea what that was I mean I was looking for jobs in galleries or doing set design or something so I interviewed with this company they were a new company it was a husband and wife that had been in business for like three years and they hired me to be an art consultant. And the job turned out to be a sales gig. And I was given a CO list, which you know about these, yeah. for every city for a commercial. I would get a CO list. It would either have an email, a name, a phone number, the company name, long list I would print out. They gave me a tape recorder. And I had to cold call Hell yeah! every morning starting at 730. Let's go cold call that list, research, find the number, find the person, get to the decision maker. And I also had to record my phone calls. Yeah. So let's, let me tell you how fast I stayed there. Um, (laughs) (laughs) No, I remember, um, I remember that um, they would listen to my cold calls that I recorded. And I got called into the office one day. And it was like, we would like you to say on the phone call that it really sounds like we have synergy. Maybe we could meet. No, okay. no. Oh, my God. I would hang if up If I on ever you hear right center, away. I just want to tell you that. So I, I told them, I said, first of all, I'm very uncomfortable because I don't speak that way. I sound like a robot. I'm not going to cold call someone and say we have synergy. Um, and I ended up quitting that job and I kind of had it out with the person uh, my the owner and I actually used that recorder and recorded the phone call and I'd never quit a job like this but I went in and got all my shit and left the recorder on their desk with the recorded <laughs> phone call That's of that a pretty rad move um, but before that I had made a plan that if they were doing they were successful at what they were doing yeah. and they had been in other industries before and I was like man if they are doing this I can do this oh yeah and I had only been there three months. I left the weekend before I had gone online and like looked up words that had art in them yeah. and came up with the company name Articulation Art. Yeah, it's badass. I always make a joke that I'm not very articulate and it's called Articulation Art. It's kind of a joke. And I ordered business cards that weekend. I bought the website domain and I came up with a fake PowerPoint presentation right. where I superimposed art on empty office wall buildings and put together a presentation and set up vendor meetings with every architect and design firm in Dallas Fort Worth. That's awesome. That was uh, how I started. I had so never you took done a just project. A little bit of action then. A little bit of action, no overhead. So I talk a lot yeah. about having low overhead. You know, people ask me, where's your office? At my kitchen table. Yeah. I, I have no office, no warehouse. Everything I do is direct to client. You know, I'm working on their projects. So I've kept low overhead over the years. Um, but I went out. This is I tell this story because I was nervous. I was scared. I had never done a project. I had never done huge, you know, meetings and front of people that were really experienced. And I mean, there were days where I would no show the meeting. There were days I wore all black every time I would go because I would be like sweating so bad. I mean, there were times where I threw up 
like in the bathroom. I was so nervous. I would sit in the parking lot, like sweating, like, what am I doing? And I remember the first. That's what Crown Royal's for, man. I probably should have had a little (laughs) flask in the car. (laughs) Um, And I was working. So I was working at a restaurant and I was bartending at night. But during the day, I would set up. I still have, I keep my, I have a handwritten calendar. And I always say I have to have a handwritten one, the phone thing, the digital stuff. That's doesn't crazy. Work for me. I do the same exact thing. I have to write thing. everything down. Yeah. I have saved for 15 years every year. Have you? My um, schedule and my calendar, and I go back and look through it. Is it like it. one day is one page on yours? Mine is like a three day. It's like I have to have a lot of space to write. Yeah. So it's like three day, and then it has a long list on one side. Yeah. I have, I'm particular about it. I can't have the little. I'm very particular, too. Mm-hmm. Mine is one day, one page. Okay. That's so good. every... And I one year I weighed mine because I was wow. like, so I went in to the year, I weighed mm-hmm. it, and it weighed like a pound and a half more at the end wow. of the year from all the ink. Yeah. You know, I'm out, mm-hmm. I would always take it in, write stuff down when yep. I was with a client. Yep. Now if I'm with a client, I'm texting other mm-hmm. people, telling them I'm making, I'm making notes about your project. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, you have so a stack of them? I have a stack of them. And I went back to look that first year i started it was um labor day weekend so i always say about september early september is my anniversary and i um i was doing two two a day normally so i would do like a breakfast meeting right. and then an afternoon meeting and i remember one time i'd set up a vendor meeting and had my little computer and my my business cards and i show up and the receptionist she's like calling the lady and the lady acts like she doesn't remember or know what's going on and I was like oh so, I was just like oh my god what am I doing <laughs> right and then all of a sudden the receptionist was like okay um if you want to go set up in the conference room everyone will be in there soon and I'm like everyone everyone <laughs> right oh my god and so I stood I got my present I mean I was so nervous like I had to connect to their system for the projector and then like got out my business card. I mean, I'm pouring sweat. I'm sick. Like, I like really wanted to throw up. Okay. And everyone started just filing in. There was like 20 architects awesome. at this office. Okay. And I am just like trial by fire. I mean, Hey, I was in there. I handed everyone a card, <laughs> you know, and I do my little presentation with like my fake project. <laughs> and one guy during the meeting goes, how old are you? <laughs> I go, old enough. <laughs> really? That's yeah, funny. and he's like, how long have you been doing this? And I was like, well, you know, I'm an artist and I worked for another business, but I've gone on my own. I can help, you know, facilitate any project. And I'll never forget that guy that had asked that at the end of the meeting came up and he handed me a post-it note. He said, call these people. He's like, it's a bank in Frisco. They're looking for art. Really? It's one of our clients. So I called. It was my first project. Okay, awesome. Five pieces of art for this bank. Right. And it was like cool old photography that I pulled from the historical. Yeah. We framed really big. And I had to Google how to install and secure art on the wall. And I had I had a Scion XB for 10 years. Okay. okay. Right. The little box car. Yeah. Because it would fit giant pieces yeah. of art in the back. It had great gas mileage. I ran that thing for 10 years. Everyone made wow. fun of me. I was like, I don't have a car payment. And this thing gets the art around town. <laughs> no doubt. What was the construction piece like for you? are Googling, like, what are you, YouTubing? Like, um, I don't know, how to hammer drill a CMU wall or? It was all of that. And leaving and going to the hardware store and figuring it out. So we're talking about go along. serious DIY. Serious DIY. Serious. And it was funny because... <laughs> The guy who I got to help me install, he's still my head installer. I had worked with him in another job. Okay. And we had all the art in the Scion. Like, I picked him up. We're, like, both in there. It's, like, over our head. (laughs) For five pieces, I think it took us eight hours to install. He now can install uh, five pieces in 15 minutes. (laughs) We've learned a lot over the years. Power tools go a long way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I'll tell you, that first few months I mean I was just I hit the pavement I mean I was just doing vendor meeting after vendor meeting after vendor meeting I I would I would research every architect and design firm because the way I thought about it the last business that I worked for they wanted to call the client directly right and I'm thinking no but wait 
the designers and the architects already have the project. And that I tried to say that to them, and they're like, no, because they're going to take a cut. And I was yeah. like, well, at this point, I didn't care. Yeah. So I did a kickback. I was like, so then I got smart. I was like, well, y'all probably already are working with, you know, another art curator, but if you would, you know, throw me a small job, I'll give you a 10% kickback on the deal. Like, I started doing Good stuff like that yep. to just give me a shot. Yep. I was like, give me a chance. Maybe we'll work well together. And I mean, I just, and now when I teach class, it's like, you just think of it as planting seeds. You're a farmer, you're planting seeds. Don't think you're getting a job that day. Don't think that anything's going to turn around that day. It's not coming yet. You're just introducing and telling everyone what you do. You just share what you do with everyone and make it easy. Don't f- people get nervous? Yep. Like an elevator pitch or you whatever. Did. Yeah. Oh, I was just when I was throwing up. Actually, right. you know, yeah. I was nervous. But if you ease into it with, "Hey, this That's is what, what I do." That's what most people are afraid of, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like I talk to people and they're like, "Well, mm-hmm. what's that job opening you have?" And I'm like, "Well, it's sales." Mm-hmm. Oh no, I I can't do sales. Yeah. And I'm like, no, see, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. We're all in sales. Yep. If you can't do it or you don't like it, means you're doing a really bad you're job doing it wrong. of it. You don't mm-hmm. have to be a used car salesman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you yeah, bet, but you but that fear didn't stop you. So if you're getting like <sighs> physically sick and then but you're still sick. you're like the, the the bell rings and you're still stepping in the ring there was every day. About, There's something to be said about there, that. There was something about I kind of had this like Are you a little crazy? A mate probably. Yeah. I was like a Welcome little like, yeah, I was a little like, I'll show you. Hell yeah. That I do have that in me. Like I was told, you know, the company I was working for, other people, you know, I'm starting my own business. I mean, even the guy I was dating at that time that I was like, hey, introduce me. Those guys are opening that restaurant. He laughed, you know, like they're not going to hire you. Well, motherfucker, you just wait because yeah. they are going to hire me. And guess yeah, what? The- Three years later, they did oh. without. I mean, the there chip was all on these the shoulder that- is a very powerful I think it gave motivator. me a lot a lot of fire. Yeah. I always feel like I have kind of this like Underdog. fire burning, yeah. like but not in a way that's it's more I think it just gives me that kind of passion, not like I'll show you and like rub it in your right. face. It's more of like proving it to myself. Yeah. Like I can definitely do that. Well type uh, of type of mentality. 